Now, I'm going to give you a bit of a lap around this particular piece of software, which is not the software that you are currently using. It's the new upgrade, which most of you should, uh, well, everyone should get access to it at some stage next week. There will be an email going out regarding this probably on Monday. The first thing perhaps you'd notice is the indicators down here are now slightly differently laid out. For instance, say your trend, trend indicators, moving averages, weighted, exponential, stop and reverse, and MACD are now here. So you can, let's say, turn the MACD on and click the MACD to turn it off. Momentum indicators, RSI, stochastics, Williams percentage R, and the trend channel indicator. Let's say we turn the RSI on, we can click here and turn it off. Your volatility indicators, um, Bollinger Band, average true range, rate of change. There's a couple of new ones in here looking at the value of the shares traded. Um, that's new. We can turn that on and off as well. And uh, let's say rate of change, we can turn that on and off. The next bit of difference is this price tool here. Uh, if we actually go back to the All Ordinaries Index, uh, we can click the high here, the August high on the All Ords, drag down to the low, and uh, that downward move was uh, 726 points. It took 57 days or 41 trading days, 41 bars, and click on it and turn it off again. We also have down here a trailing stop loss tool. I'm not going to go into that at the moment and demonstrate it. I think you need to play with it a little bit before uh, we start talking about it, but the idea is at some stage to expand on that trailing stop and have uh, almost every possible trailing stop loss method known to man. We'll put percentages in there, we'll put dollar values, ATRs and so on and so forth. The concept being to build a trailing stop loss or a stop loss toolbox. Now, if we go up to settings, you'll notice a few different colors here. Uh, we can change the primary color of the software to gray. Uh, I understand that programmers like it black. So we can do that and you can change your fonts and your secondary colors and so on and so forth. Uh, personally, I'll stick with the white. The secondary colors uh, I'll shift to a green perhaps so now you'll notice that the anything that uh, is in use is highlighted in that color um, so your MACD is also highlighted in that color and again you can turn it off down there so there's a few differences with the settings with the color scheme uh, if we come back over to the types of charts, the Kagi chart, you can adjust your input with that as you can with uh, point and figure. So you can adjust your box size and your reversal simply um, pressing that uh, settings tool there. Let's make the box size uh, 60 and we'll leave the reversal at three. We can save that. Um, and uh, future charts will reflect uh, that change. Okay, whoops. Um, I've gone into the wrong area there, but never mind. The next thing up here is uh, the Guru's Toolbox. Now, we have in here the uh, Bollinger Squeeze, which I think a fair few people have been waiting a long time for that one. But um, I have done a 
Bollinger Squeeze scan on the closing data today, and these are the stocks that have come up. Uh, we have AE, AEB first cab off the rank, then AHY, and I think we go back to six monthly on that. Uh, I've already got a line drawn where I see resistance, so a break of the Bollinger and a break of the resistance line would get me very interested in AHY. Uh, AZS is the next one. And following that, we have BLA. Actually, I'll go back to the six monthly on that one. Um, the next one, and we've actually got 35 of them here, so uh, there's, there's a fair few of them out there. CRB, CSV, BFM, G88, GSW, and I must admit uh, I kind of like that one. Issued cap only 100 million out there. Uh, closing today at 53 cents. Wait for a bit of volume to come in on that one. IOF, uh, I think you can tell that's takeover uh, action rather than just a tightening price range. Uh, LKE, you can see here the effect. Um, here's where the Bollinger Band tightens. And uh, at, at, at this point here, roughly, it has to break one way or the other. So you can place contingent orders to take advantage of the uh, upward move or the downward move if you are into shorting. LON, pretty tight sort of band there. N27, similar again. While I'm doing that, uh, I can change the price range over here simply by uh, bringing the, draw, the uh, cursor into that area and raise and lower according to what you want. The next one is NXE. Now, then we have OOK. I'm not all of these. We have a few other things to look at. Back into the Guru's toolbox. In there we have capitulation days. Now, this is where, uh, to my mind, you have huge volume in the last uh, couple of days and, and huge downward moves. So really people have basically uh, been caught in a downtrend Market moves down, price moves down for quite a while, and then all of a sudden, everyone just gives up. And there's two days of huge selling, two days of um, pretty heftily decreasing prices, and quite often that's the end of the downward move, when everyone that is going to sell at some stage finally gives up and sells. Um, with the upward move this week, it doesn't look like we're going to find much, although there's one just come up. So I'll cancel that scan. And the one that came up is ISD. Let's zero in on that a bit. Two big days, uh, no, no great uh, price drop there. Um, probably not the greatest example, however. The next scan in there is a scan for higher highs, higher lows. Um, okay, we have a few there. We've got a significant low here, a high and the higher low. We're just waiting to uh, break through again. That's EGH. EXL, we have the first high, higher low, and looking to break this area here at around $2.15. The next one is FET, and again, we've got this high, higher low, looking for the higher high. HRL, uh, similar, uh, first high, high low, looking for a further break. Done a lot of work across there at 18 cents. 
potentially wait uh, even for a break of 20, but how you trade it is up to you. The main thing is just to find these stocks. Uh, IMD, that looks pretty good. First high, high low, reaching for the second higher high at the moment. MRP, uh, that's interesting. Big rally in on balance volume. First high, high low, going for the higher high. And again with that one, uh, again very good um, on balance volume. That looks like breaking any moment. And that's the last one there. Um, now there's a couple of other scans in there, on balance volume scan, looking for huge candles. Um, my favourite pattern. They are all things that um, you'll be able to test out very, very shortly. The uh, next thing here is a trade planner. Let's create a new trade plan on this stock, uh, SCP. Let's just argue that we have an account of $50,000. The stock code is SCP. Current price is $2.62. Let's assume that we're going to buy it at, let's say, $2.65. Uh, next step, uh, $2.62. Let's just argue that our stop is going to be $2.46. So we're risking 16 cents. Now, with that portfolio of $50,000, let's assume that we're happy to risk 2% of that $50,000 portfolio. So we enter the 2%. Uh, this automatically shows that we're prepared to risk $1,000, which equals 2% of $50,000. Therefore, we can buy 6,250 of them, risking $0.16 cents per share, that gives us our thousand dollar risk um, position size 16,375 now you're not going to put probably sixteen thousand dollars out of a fifty thousand dollar portfolio into one stock so let's just see what the effect of cutting this back to Let's just go with twelve thousand uh, dollar. Sorry, twelve thousand shares. We now um, have a a trade risk of seven hundred and thirty two dollars. We can now buy four thousand five hundred and eighty of them. So let's just leave it at that for the sake of the argument. Next step, we can um, tick whatever. The buy signal is here. It might be via a newsletter or we can create another one um, and we can call it a hot tip. And if you take 10 hot tips and they don't work, I'd suggest you don't take any more. Uh, so we tick hot tip and if we wanted to get rid of that, we just hit the cross and it's gone. Next step, confirmation signals. Uh, Paul told me I'll always tick on balance volume, otherwise I won't do the trade. Next step, risk management. Um, I will always use a data point. Next step, uh, the exit. There are no gaps. This looks like um, clear blue sky. So I'm just going to write uh, clear blue sky. Uh, dash and two dollars sixty-two. I'll just put in uh, three dollars sixty-two and hit OK on that. Now I can save that, and if I hit this button here, it will download that whole plan in a uh, PDF format. So you can uh, file that away, review your trade, so on and so forth. So that is the trade planner. That sums up most of the features. Um, uh, there'll be other little things that you may or may not notice. 
Uh, the only thing I haven't really played with is that particular trailing stop method. Uh, and I thought just quickly I would do a DAVA scan because we have changed a few things with DAVA. So you can scan for uh, a break up. Uh, you can scan for a short DAVA position. I'm going to leave the scan period at 21 days. I'm going to tick in a box, in the first box. Uh, we'll have 1.01 uh, .01 of a cent to $5. Ignore the uh, 280 days, so on and so forth. Normal stuff. And we have a one Davis box. And it doesn't look like a bad one either. Uh, I have an ascending or have had an ascending triangle on here. You'll notice also a new uh, arrow tool here, which um, I can uh, grab and move around and so on and so forth. Uh, but this looks interesting. Break of 34 and a half would be interesting. Stop at 29 and a half. So the, we have really tightened the parameters required for a Davis box. Um, you know, in, in 06, 07, uh, a default Dava scan would probably have bought up 150 odd stocks. I'd be surprised now if it brings up 30, but they will be far better, far more robust Dava boxes. Okay, so there's a quick demonstration playing with a few of the new features on the new upgrade. Okay, I'll leave it at that until next week. Cheers.